Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for dropping by. I hope you're having a good day. We're going to continue on with the Red Dwarf series here now. We're up to uh, Season 2. Yep, Season 2, Crichton. Okay, I kind of remember Crichton. Crichton was an uh, android, I guess. A robot. I, I kind of remember Crichton. He had like a funny shaped head. The last one, the last episode was... Oh yeah, getting rid of the, the second rimmer they had put out when Lister was looking for Kachansky's disc and Rimmer had switched all the discs to him. <laughs> so they had two R Rimmers, but even he couldn't stand it. Rimmer had to get rid of Rimmer. Couldn't stand him. <laughs> he was annoying himself too much. So we got rid of him. And now we're up to season two. And season two, like I say, is Crichton. Like I said, I think I know quite Crichton. Crichton was the robot. So I guess this is their original meeting. So we're going to watch. All right. So if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications and share the video around. Right. Okay. Let's go. Let's watch. As the days go by, we face the increasing inevitability that we are alone in a godless, uninhabited, hostile and meaningless universe. Still, you've got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> Sit down, Brooke. There's something I must tell you. I spent the night with Gary. Brooke Jr. What about Brooke Jr.? He isn't your android. <laughs> oh, he looked different. They're kind of different. Wait a minute, don't tell me. I hope when you come, the weather will be clement. I hope when you come, the weather will be clement. Mister, don't tell me I could have got that. Le Manjo Estes Bonega. I would like to purchase that orange inflatable beach ball and that small bucket and spade. The meal was splendid. <laughs> Remember, you've been doing Esperanto for eight years. Esperanto. How come you're so utterly useless? Oh, speaks. And how many books have you read? I went to art college. How did you get into art college? Failed me exams and applied. Ah, but you didn't get a degree, did you? Uh, I dropped out. It wasn't there long. How long? 97 minutes. But I took one look at the timetable and just checked out, man. They had lectures, like, first thing in the afternoon. <laughs> well, unlike you, Lister, I have ambitions. And one of my ambitions is to learn another language, so kindly let me get on with it. Play. The provos la coquille d'argent. The menu looks interesting. I think I'll try the chicken. Holly, as the Esperantinos would say, Bon volo al sendi la pordiston la uscane estesrano in mia video. And I think we all know what that means. Yeah, it means could you send for the hall porter? There appears to be a frog in my bidet. What's <laughs> that? Because you're bored, isn't it? That's why you're both annoying me. I'm not bored. I've devised a system to totally revolutionise music. Get out of town. Yeah, I've decimalised it. <laughs> Instead of the octave, it's a decadive. And I've invented two new notes, H and J. Hang on a minute. You can't just invent new notes. Well, I have. <laughs> now it goes, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, wo, bo, ti, do. What are you drivelling about? Whole rock. It'll be a whole new sound. All the instruments will be extra big to incorporate my two new notes. Triangles will have four sides. <laughs> Piano keyboards, the length of zebra crossings. Of course, women will have to be banned from playing the cello. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I haven't told you the news. What news? A signal. We're getting a signal. Aliens. Your explanation for anything slightly peculiar is aliens, isn't it? You lose your keys. It's aliens. That time we used up a whole bog roll in a day. Well, we didn't use it all this time. Remember, aliens used our bog roll. <laughs> Just because they're aliens doesn't mean to say they don't have to visit the little boy's room. Oh, they probably do something weird and alien-esque, like it comes out of the top of their heads or something. Well, I wouldn't like to be stuck behind one in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, mousy, mousy. I got some cheese. I only want to be your friend. <laughs> Yo, cat. We're getting a signal. Come on. It's a distress call from a ship called the Nova Five. So it's not aliens, then? No, they're from Earth. Hope they've got some spare odds and sods on board. We're a bit short on a few supplies. Like what? Cow's milk. What kind of milk are we using now? Emergency backup supply. We're on the dog's milk. <laughs> I 
Nothing wrong with dog's milk. Full of goodness. Full of marabone jelly. Lasts longer than any other type of milk, dog's milk. Why? No bugger a drink it. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me, Holly? What, and spoil your tea? Hang about, we've got contact. Thank goodness. My name is Crichton. Oh, you look a lot different, right? I'm the aboard the Nova 5. We've had a terrible accident. The female officers are injured but mm. stable. Is that female as in soft and squidgy? How many? Three. I am transmitting medical details. By God, we'll rescue these fair blues, <laughs> or my name's not Captain A.J. Rimmer, space adventurer. Space adventurer? What am I supposed to say? Fear not, I'm the bloke who used to clean the gunk out of the chicken soup machine. How far are we away, Hoff? About 24 hours. Only 24 hours? I better start getting ready. 24 hours. Ah, first in the shower room. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited, all six of my nipples are tingling. <laughs> We're on a mission of mercy. We're taking them urgently needed medical supplies. We're not on the pull. <laughs> no, we're not on the pool, are we, Lister? You're really trying, aren't you? You're wearing all your least smeggy things. And what about you? You look like Clive of India. <laughs> oh, it started. I knew it would. What has? It's always the same when we meet girls. Put me down and make yourself look good. Remember those two little brunettes? And I told them I worked in stores, and they were really interested and asked me exactly what I did there. And I said you were a shelf. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then I suggested a little trip to Titan Zoo and you said, ooh, he's taking you home to meet his mum already. <laughs> oh, they laugh. Just don't put me down when we meet them. How do you want me to act? For a start, don't call me Rimmer. Why not? Makes me sound like a lavatory disinfectant. <laughs> well, what do you want me to call you, Rimmer? Big man. <laughs> <laughs> Big man. <laughs> or what about the nickname I had at school? Ace. <laughs> Get out of town. Your nickname was never Ace. Maybe Ace Hole. <laughs> it was my nickname at school, actually. Just, no one ever called me it, despite how many times I let them beat me up. <laughs> Bill be up. Don't put me down. Like? You could perhaps mention that I'm very brave. Do what? Perhaps you could just mention, hint that I've had tons of girlfriends. <laughs> All right, forget it. It was just an idea. Oh, you're not wearing those boots, are you? What's wrong with them? You should wear your day-glow orange moon boots. <laughs> you said they smelt like an orangutan's potion pouch. <laughs> <laughs> you made me put them in the airlock. That was a mistake. They really look terrific on you. I'd wear them. Come along, everybody. They're here. <gasps> uh <-huh. laughs> what a mess you look. <laughs> Why, you haven't touched your soup. No wonder you're beginning to look so tasty. Miss Tracy, you look absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> are you OK? Your eyes are watering. Look, we can't wait for the cat. Let's just go. And he's been preparing for a day and a night. Don't you want to see the result? <laughs> <laughs> Wait for me! Hi, <laughs> monkeys! Be the plastic surgeon's nightmare! The spacesuit with cufflinks. We just gotta make sure we don't pass any mirrors, because if we do, I'm there for the day. <laughs> oh, what's that smell? All right, everybody ready? <laughs> the rook man, why are you wearing a toupee? What toupee? It makes you look like a game show host. What's wrong with everyone? What about you and the sock? You've got two pairs of socks. One pair to put on his feet, and the other pair to roll up and put down his trousers. <laughs> come in, come in. How lovely to meet you. And what a delightful craft you have. This way, please. <laughs> I'm so excited. 
excited. We all are. Yeah, they are. I think the blonde one's giving you the eye. I'll just go and fix some tea. Hi, baby. I don't believe it. Be it's the android version of Norman Bates. Listen, girls. My mate Ace here is incredibly, credibly brave. <laughs> and he's got just tons and tons of girlfriends. Is anything the matter? They're all dead. Well, I was only away two minutes. <laughs> They've been dead for centuries. Are you a doctor? <laughs> You've only got to look at them. They've got less meat on them than a chicken nugget. You're that sure they're dead? There's a simple test. All right, girls, hands up those of you who are alive. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? I was created to serve. That is my purpose, to serve and have no regard for myself. You begin to sound like my mum. It's all I know. You've got to change, haven't you? Stop being everyone's smegging doormat. That's easy for you to say, Mr. David. You're a human. Only just. Ah, Christ. Follow me. What the smagging hell is going on? <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. David, sir. What are these? Your boxer shorts, Mr. David, sir. No way are these my boxer shorts. <laughs> these bends? Where's me coffee cup with the mould in it? I threw it away, sir. <laughs> I was trying to get them two foot high. Why, sir? Because it drives rimmer nuts. And driving rimmer nuts is what keeps me going. What are you doing? Why are you doing all this? Well, serving makes me happy, sir. But what about you? Don't you ever want to do anything just for yourself? For myself? <laughs> Come on, there must be something you look forward to. Androids. That stupid soap opera, why? Well, because for half an hour a week I can forget I'm me. What else? Oh, being asleep. Androids and being asleep? <laughs> I have strange thoughts when I'm asleep. Yeah, they're called dreams. My favourite one is that I'm, I'm in a garden, and there's no one there but me. Just me and all the things I made live. Find a planet with an atmosphere and do it. So what about Mr. Arnold? I've got to complete Mr. Arnold's tasks. <laughs> Rimmer gave you all this. Well, Mr. Arnold is my master now. His name's Rimmer, or Smeghead. <laughs> Good time. And on a very rare occasion when you want to be, like, really mega polite to him, Crichton, and we're talking mega polite, you can call him... Arsehole. <laughs> I think it'll be best on that wall. Yes, Mr. Arnold, sir. Yes, Mr. Arnold, sir. It enjoys doing the tasks I give it. It makes it happy. You never get a cat to be a servant. You ever see a cat return a stick? If you wanted a stick so bad, why'd you throw it away in the first place? <laughs> Crichton, you never got a thing from those movies I showed you. Uh, what movies? Easy Rider and Rebel Without a Cause. I thought it might do him some good. In the middle of Marlon Brando's rebel speech, he gets out a brush of matic and starts doing me lapels. <laughs> well, now maybe you'll learn, Lister. There's a natural order to things in life. Isn't that true, Crichton? Oh, yes, Mr. Arnoldson. Oh, yes, Mr. Arnold. What's the point? I finish, Mr. Arnoldson. Excellent, Crichton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rebelling. Rebelling? What are you rebelling against? What do you got? <laughs> Smeg for brains? <laughs> I need your bite. You got it? Swivel on it, punk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was uh, Red Dwarf Season 2, Episode 1, Crichton. I don't know, I kind of remember Crichton, but it wasn't like this. I don't know. And I'm sure he was in more than one episode. Anyway, uh, it was pretty funny. You know, to find a guy, I guess. I guess he just couldn't get to it that they were dead. You know, had to have some purpose. <laughs> Been dead for centuries. It was a pretty good episode, and uh, 
you know, first one of the second season, it had some funny bits. The cat seemed to be a little more involved in, in the episodes from the last season. You know, you'd see him briefly here and there, but he, he was in a few more scenes. It seemed to be a little more to it this, this season than last season, although this is just the first episode. You know, they got to go off the ship in their uh, little one. And even though, you know, the, the women were dead, you know, it was still something adventurous, something to do. So that wasn't bad. So if you liked the video, you know, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day.